This is Electric Universe Eyes, and today I'm going to narrate the Book of Abraham, Chapter 3. We're going to begin with checking out this facsimile from the Book of Abraham. This is facsimile number one. Figure one, the angel of the Lord. Figure two, Abraham fastened upon an altar. Figure three, the idolatrous priest of Elkanah attempting to offer up Abraham as a sacrifice. Figure four, the altar for sacrifice by the adulterous priest standing before the gods of Elkanah, Libna, Mamakra, Korash, and Pharaoh. Figure five, the adulterous god of Elkna. Figure six, the adulterous god of Libna. Figure seven, the adulterous god of Mamakra. Figure eight, the adulterous god of Korash. Figure nine, the adulterous god of Pharaoh. Figure 10, Abraham in Egypt. Figure 11, designed to represent the pillars of heaven as understood by the Egyptians. Figure 12, Raiki Yang, signifying expanse or the firmament over our heads. But in this case, in relation to this subject, the Egyptians meant it to signify Shamu, to be high or the heavens answering to the Hebrew word Shamayim. I'm only going to narrate chapter three, and this is what chapter three uh, is described as. Abraham learns about the sun, moon, and stars by means of the Urim and Thummim. The Lord reveals to him the eternal nature of spirits. He learns of pre-earth life, foreordination, the creation, the choosing of a redeemer, and the second estate of man. And I, Abraham, had the Urim and Thummim, which the Lord my God had given unto me, in Ur of the Chaldees. And I saw the stars, that they were very great, and that one of them was nearest unto the throne of God. And there were many great ones which were near unto it. And the Lord said unto me, These are the governing ones, and the name of the great one is Kolob, because it is near unto me, for I am the Lord thy God. I have set this one to govern all those which belong to the same order as that upon which thou standest. And the Lord said unto me, By the Urim and Thummim, that Kolob was after the manner of the Lord, according to its times and seasons and the revolutions thereof, that one revolution was a day unto the Lord, after his manner of reckoning, it being one thousand years according to the time appointed to that whereon thou standest. This is the reckoning of the Lord's time, according to the reckoning of Kolob. And the Lord said unto me, The planet which is the lesser light, lesser than that which is to rule the day, even the night, is above or greater than that upon which thou standest in point of reckoning. For it moveth in order more slow. This is in order because it standeth above the earth upon which thou standest. Therefore the reckoning of time is not so many as to its number of days, and of months, and of years. And the Lord said unto me, Now Abraham, these two facts exist. Behold thine eyes see it. It is given unto thee to know the times of reckoning, and the set time, yea, the set time of the earth upon which thou standest, and the set time of the greater light which is set to rule the day and the set time of the lesser light, which is set to rule the night. Now the set time of the lesser light is a longer time as to its reckoning than the reckoning of time of the earth upon which thou standest. And where these two facts exist, there shall be another fact above them. That is, there shall be another planet whose reckoning of time shall be longer still. And thus there shall be the reckoning of the time of one planet above another, until thou come nigh unto Kolob which Kolob is after the reckoning of the Lord's time, which Kolob is set nigh unto the throne of God to govern all those planets which belong to the same order as that upon which thou standest. And it is given unto thee to know the set time of all the stars that are set to give light unto thou come near unto the throne of God. Thus I, Abraham, talked with the Lord face to face as one man talketh with another, and he told me of the works which his hands had made. And he said unto me, My son, my son and his hand was stretched out. Behold, I will show you all these. And he put his hand upon mine eyes. And I saw those things which his hands had made, which were many, and they multiplied before mine eyes. And I could not see the end thereof. And he said unto me, This is Shenah, which is the sun. And he said unto me, Kokob, which is star. And he said unto me, Olia, which is the moon. And he said unto me, Kokobim, which signifies stars, or all the great lights, which were in the firmament of heaven. And it was in the night time when the Lord spake these words unto me, I will multiply thee, and thy seed after thee, like unto these, 
And if thou canst count the number of sands, so shall be the number of thy seeds. And the Lord said unto me, Abraham, I show these things unto thee before ye go into Egypt, that ye may declare all these words. If these two things exist, and there be one above the other, there shall be greater things above them. Therefore, Kolob is the greatest of all the cocoa beam that thou hast seen, because it is nearest unto me. Now if there be two things, one above the other, and the moon be above the earth, then it may be that a planet or a star may exist above it. And there is nothing that the Lord thy God shall take in his heart to do but what he will do it. Howbeit that he made the greater star, as also if there be two spirits, and one shall be more intelligent than the other. Yet these two spirits, notwithstanding one is more intelligent than the other, have no beginning. They existed before, they shall have no end. They shall exist after, for they are granolum, or eternal. And the Lord said unto me, These two facts do exist, that there are two spirits, one being more intelligent than the other. There shall be another more intelligent than they. I am the Lord thy God. I am more intelligent than they all. The Lord thy God set his angel to deliver thee from the hands of the priest Elkanah. I dwell in the midst of them all. I now, therefore, have come down unto thee to declare unto thee the works which my hands have made, wherein my wisdom excelleth them all. For I rule in the heavens above, and in the earth beneath, in all wisdom and prudence, over all the intelligences thine eyes have seen from the beginning. I came down in the beginning in the midst of all the intelligences thou hast seen. Now the Lord had shown unto me, Abraham, the intelligences that were organized before the world was, and among all these there were many of the noble and great ones. And God saw these souls that they were good, and he stood in the midst of them, and he said, These I will make my rulers. For he stood among those that were spirits, and he saw that they were good. And he said unto me, Abraham, thou art one of them. Thou wast chosen before thou wast born. And there were stood one among them that was like unto God. And he said unto those who were with him, We will go down, for there is space there, and we will take of these materials, and we will make an earth whereon these may dwell. And we will prove them herewith, to see if they will do all things whatsoever the Lord their God shall command them. And they who keep their first state shall be added upon, and they who keep not their first state shall not have glory in the same kingdom with those who keep their first state. And they who keep their second estate shall have glory added upon their heads forever and ever. And the Lord said, Whom shall I send? And the one answered like unto the Son of Man, Here I am, send me. And another answered and said, Here I am, send me. And the Lord said, I will send the first. And the second was angry, and kept not his first estate. And at that day many followed after him. Here is facsimile number two from the book of Abraham. Figure one, Kolob, signifying the first creation, nearest to the celestial, or to the residence of God, first in government, the last pertaining to the measurement of time the measurement according to celestial time, which celestial time signifies one day to a cubit. One day in Kolob is equal to a thousand years according to the measurement of this earth, which is called by the Egyptians Jahoe. Figure two stands next to Kolob, called the Egyptians Alblish, which is the next grand governing creation near to the celestial or the place where God resides, holding the key of power also pertaining to other planets as revealed from God to Abraham as he offered sacrifice upon an altar, which he had built unto the Lord. Figure three is made to represent God sitting upon his throne, clothed with power and authority, with a crown of eternal light upon his head, representing also the grand key words of the holy priesthood as revealed to Adam in the Garden of Eden, also as to Seth, Noah, Melchizedek, Abraham, and all to whom the priesthood was revealed. Figure four answers to the Hebrew word Raikiyang, signifying expanse, or the firmament of the heavens. Also a numerical figure, an Egyptian, signifying 1,000, answering to the measuring of the time of Alablish, which is equal with Kolob and its revolution and its measuring of time. Figure 5 is called an Egyptian Enish Goandash. This is one of the governing planets also, and is said by the Egyptians to be the sun, and to borrow its light from Kolob through the medium of Kai Ivanrash which is the grand key, or in other words, the governing power, which governs 15 other fixed planets or stars, as also Flois, or the moon, 
the Earth and the Sun in their annual revolutions. This planet receives its power through the medium of Cleflus Isses, or Hakokobin. The stars represented by numbers 22 and 23 receiving light from the revolutions of Kolob. Figure 6 represents this Earth and its four quarters. Figure 7 represents God sitting upon his throne, revealing through the heavens the grand key words of the priesthood, as also the sign of the Holy Ghost unto Abraham in the form of a dove. Figure 8 contains writings that cannot be revealed unto the world, but is to be had in the holy temple of God. Interesting. Figure 9 ought not to be revealed at the present time. Figure 10 also. Figure 11 also. If the world can find out these numbers, so let it be. Amen. Figures 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21 will be given in the own due time of the Lord. The above translation is given as far as we have any right to give at the present time. In closing, let's look at facsimile number three from the book of Abraham. And the explanation goes, figure one, Abraham sitting upon Pharaoh's throne by the politeness of the king with a crown upon his head, representing the priesthood as emblematical of the grand presidency in heaven with the scepter of justice and judgment in his hand. Figure two, King Pharaoh, whose name is given in the characters above his head. Figure three signifies Abraham in Egypt as given also in figure 10 of facsimile number one. Figure four, prince of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, as written above the hand. Figure five, Shulam, one of king's principal waiters, as represented by the characters above his hand. Figure six, Olimla, a slave belonging to the prince. Abraham is reasoning upon the principles of astronomy in the king's court. So, it's definitely some, uh, some interesting scripture. Reminds me of the polar configuration. I think the scripture I grew up with is trying to tell me something that modern science doesn't want me to know. So these are scriptures that I grew up with. Images I grew up with. And they never made sense. They never really made sense. None of this ever made sense until 2011, and I came across the Thunderbolts Project. David Talbot helped me make sense of something I had no idea would make sense, if that even makes sense. I hope you enjoyed this today. Toodaloo.